organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV, find out how to avoid hibernation and stay healthy and fit this winter. Plus, Iowa's in the crosshairs as GOP candidates take aim at the Republican caucus. And in sports, find out who we named male athlete of the semester. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Daily Iowan TV, your telev television, news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm Ryan Jones. And I'm John Dedcott. Justified. That's word being used to describe Iowa City police officers who shot a suicidal man when he grabbed for a gun earlier this month. In a presentation Monday, Johnson County Attorney Janet Linus presented her report of the 45-minute standoff that ended with officers shooting and injuring 21-year-old Chad Newmeyer. Linus called the officer's actions both justified and appropriate, and Newmeyer, who police say was bent on either injuring himself or forcing officers to shoot him, will not face criminal charges and will instead undergo treatment for mental health issues. With the cold weather selling in, most students are spending less time outdoors, particularly in regards to health and fitness. A new study suggests Americans exercise the least during the months of November and December. Daily Iowa TV's Nick Fetty explains what UI students are doing to burn calories and stay warm this winter. A recent Gallup poll shows that there's a decline in the percentage of Americans who exercise in the month of November this year compared to November of 2010. According to the poll, 49.8% of Americans reported exercising for at least 30 minutes three or more days a week compared to 50.5% last November. These numbers tend to dip even more as we enter the month of December, which is when the University of Iowa Campus Recreation and Wellness Center sees its biggest decline. I think November and December are um, slower months for us, but you know our, our main focus is students, and so you know you, they're preparing for finals, and it's a little quieter, and, and then they're gone for winter break. So New Year's on um, to spring break is our busiest time of the year, and I think that's actually a national trend for you know university and college recreation centers. The United Health Foundation compiled its 2011 America's Health Rankings and placed Iowa as the number 17th healthiest state in the U.S. Vermont was ranked as the healthiest state in the 2011 edition, while Mississippi was dubbed the most unhealthy. Four of the top five healthiest states were in the northeast region of the country, while the five most unhealthy states were in the south. However, despite the cold Iowa winters, this study shows that many Iowans still value health and fitness, even if they have to exercise indoors. No, I actually try and come in more due to the weather. It's harder to run outside, so I like it in here where it's warm. It's nicer to run. Finals week and holiday breaks may contribute to the dips in numbers this month, but the rec center is rarely unoccupied and the busiest months are yet to come. While numbers may dip slightly during the months of November and December, many people still fit exercise in their busy schedule, and February is actually one of the busiest months here at the rec center. This just goes to show that cold weather isn't enough to keep Iowans from hitting the gym. Nick Fetty, Daily Iowa TV. For students looking to get a workout in over break, the Campus Recreation and Wellness Center is open for the majority of break. And you can check their website for a complete schedule. Governor Terry Branstad is confident the Iowa Supreme Court has his back. Monday, the governor said he expects the court to uphold his veto of the Iowa Workforce Development Offices. Branstad says the offices are inefficient, citing computer terminals and libraries as a more effective way to work towards his goal of adding 200,000 in-state jobs over the next five years. Although nothing is expected to be finalized this fiscal year, Branstad says this is more a test of gubernatorial authority than anything else saying this is an important case because it is going to determine for the future and for future governors their ability to control spending and provide the best and most efficient services to the people of Iowa. Now, opponents say the governor's veto goes too far and that his decentralized strategy is impersonal and ineffective. And assaults may be on the rise in Iowa City. Although 2010 saw a big 12.74% decrease in the number of assaults compared to 2009, police say those numbers now may be increasing. Compared to 2010, assaults have risen in each of the first three quarters of 2011. Police officials say the initial drop was likely due to the 21 ordinance, but exceptions to the rule are likely contributing to the recent rise. For a complete breakdown of the influence of out-of-towners are having on this problem, be sure to check out the Tuesday's pages of The Daily Iowan. 
And as if you didn't know already, finals week started Monday here at the UI, but already UI officials are looking for ways to improve the last week of the semester. This spring, the UI will implement a new system designed to cut back on the need for extra classrooms and test proctors. And just a reminder to students looking for a place to study, although there's no guarantee you'll find a seat, the main library will be open 24 hours for the rest of finals week. And if you need a little de-stressing, the campus activities board will be offering free massages in the IMU on Tuesday night. And still to come on Daily Iowa TV, find out what Republican candidates have in store for the final three weeks before the Iowa caucus. Plus in sports, hear about a freshman gymnast who will be a long way from home this Christmas. But first, Daily Iowa TV's Allie Holcamp joins us in the studio for a look at your local weather forecast. Allie? Thanks, guys. It looks like it'll be good studying weather as we're expecting some more rain this week. Tomorrow morning should be dry, though, with temperatures around 37 degrees with cloudy skies. Look for those clouds to open up sometime in the afternoon, though. We're looking at a... Midday high of 41 with a 30% chance of rain. That will turn into a 90% chance of rain in the evening with temps around 38 degrees. Looking ahead to the rest of the week, we'll see another 90% chance of rain on Wednesday and temps may even get into the 50s with a high of 51. That warm weather won't last long though as you can expect temps to drop back down to 40 on Thursday and 32 by Friday. We might see a little warm up on the first days of break though with highs of 34 and 40 on Saturday and Sunday. That's your check of the weather. Back to you guys at the desk. A Coralville woman is being charged with causing serious injury after allegedly stabbing someone with a steak knife. 25-year-old Stephanie Pipkin was arrested after allegedly getting into a physical altercation with an unidentified victim Sunday morning. Pipkin allegedly stabbed the victim in the back with a steak knife, causing serious injury. According to reports, Pipkin admitted to the incident as being charged with willful injury, a Class C felony. A new UI poll shows Newt Gingrich remains the frontrunner in the GOP presidential race. The Hawkeye poll released Monday shows Gingrich leading Mitt Romney by considerable margin among likely Republican caucus goers. But UI professors in charge of the poll say that support may be dwindling as that gap between Gingrich and the rest of the GOP field continues to decrease. Experts also say Gingrich's decreasing support has been typical of past frontrunners in the race, and they will need to turn out big numbers of supporters on caucus night if he is to retain his lead. Elsewhere in the GOP race, Michelle Bachman, who finished fifth in the Hawkeye poll, announced Monday that she plans to visit all 99 counties in Iowa before December 28th. You may remember that Bachman actually won the Ames Straw Poll earlier this year before falling behind Gingrich and other candidates. And Ron Paul, who was endorsed by the Daily Iowan for the GOP caucus and was the Hawkeye poll's third place finisher, opened his Iowa City office on Monday. Experts say Paul has strong support from young Republican voters and officials with the campaign say that the new office will only help to increase that support. And now for all things Hawkeye Athletics, let's send over to Daily Iowa TV's Kate Constable in sports. As the semester closes at the end of the week, we like to honor the top performers from the fall. On last night's show, Alex Lovell was awarded our top freshman of the semester, and today the top athlete of the fall 2011 goes to football wide receiver Marvin McNutt, and he's got quite the resume for it. This season, he earned the Richter Howard Receiver of the Year Award in the Big Ten Conference, was named first team All Big Ten, caught 78 receptions, set the single season record for yardage and touchdowns, and also set the school record for most touchdown receptions over his four years with 28. 12 of them came this season. He'll wear the black and gold one last time on December 30th at the Insight Bowl. Congratulations on a historic season. And Diane Nakuri Johnson, former UI track star, traveled to America and chose to compete for Iowa for Big Ten and National Championships. But now that she's graduated, her training hasn't stopped. This time around, she's training for the gold. Daily Iowa TV's Muriel Kune has more. For someone who didn't know what the Olympics were prior to her 2000 Olympic debut in Sydney, Diane Nakuri Johnson is now very aware of its meaning as it steadily approaches and a support system to go with it. And I have a lot of friends around here who help me um, just like drive me or bike alongside me when I'm training, just like texting, calling me just to make sure I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay when I'm not running by myself. Even with the growing support she now has from her friends and family, her coach remembers a somewhat different experience. I can remember when she came, she was quiet, still uh, lacking a lot of confidence in the English language. But she didn't let that stop her even when thoughts of home crept to mind. It's been hard. I miss them a lot. Um, just having all my siblings there and my sisters, not being able to see them, not being able to talk to them on a the phone every day, it's been really hard. 
The difficulty of being separated from her family isn't all she's had to deal with. After losing her father at the age of nine to the civil war that ravaged the country, it is a wonder how she stayed afloat. I think it's just through a lot of hard work and determination and, and great desire. 517 pace, nice and relaxed now. Looking ahead, the same worth ethic and desire may pay off as she competes in the upcoming New York Marathon. As the Olympics inches closer, will the preparation be enough? I certainly think uh, she's got what it takes to compete in the Olympics. Uh, she's attained the A standard, which is, which is the automatic standard. They, they don't set that arbitrarily. That's a, a standard that certainly eliminates the majority of the world. And the world will look on in 2012 as she tries her chance at Olympic gold. This is Muriel Kone, Daily Eye on TV. The Iowa men's gymnastics team is full of guys from all over the country. The farthest, though, is 9,463 miles away. The Hawks welcome freshman Brandon Field to their roster this year, all the way from New Zealand. I took a closer look at what brought Brandon to the States. Brandon first became interested in, in Iowa when the guys on the team promoted the Hawkeyes to him on Facebook. After taking a deeper look at the school and checking out other Big Ten options, Brandon decided that with a new, young coaching staff here, he would fit in quite nicely. However, these weren't the only reasons he decided to come to the States. Opportunities here are amazing and there's nothing like this in New Zealand. With nothing like the competition that gymnastics in America brings, Brandon's teammates have made this transition quite easy for him. I'm having a lot of fun and I haven't really felt homesick yet. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. His lack of homesickness may be due to the support and help from his teammates while adjusting to the differences that American culture brings. Although there are a few differences that Brandon still hasn't gotten the hang of. Nothing too out of the ordinary The money. I get a no before the small change. Although right now dealing with coins is the least of Brandon's worries. He dislocated his middle finger during practice earlier this season, allowing him to only participate on the vault during the team's inter-squad meet. And with the team's first official meet in January, Brandon won't be flying home for the holidays. But it seems his excitement to start the season is a gift of its own. Brandon and the team will kick off their season on January 13th in Chicago at the Windy City Invitational. Ryan and John, back to you guys. Thanks, Kate. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Tuesday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about why area blood banks are hoping more people will remember it's better to give than receive this holiday season. Plus, Daily Iowan Sports takes an in-depth look at the history and the future of the UI Fieldhouse. And before we go, here's one last look at tomorrow's forecast. Tomorrow we'll see a high of 43 degrees, but with those temp warm temperatures, we're looking at a 30% chance of rain and an overnight low of 36. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowa TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. For Daily Iowa TV, thanks for watching and have a great day.